Hello, I'm Shaza and welcome to my channel Hooked on Books. Today I'm going to be looking at this book which is the White Book and it's on the long list for the Man Booker International Prize and I'm going to let you know my thoughts on it. First of all, I loved it. It's hard to say exactly what this book is. It's one of those books that doesn't fit neatly into any genre um, unless genius is a genre. Um, it's a book, it doesn't necessarily feel like a novel to me, it feels more like a book of poetry. Um, it's it's a book that I guess defies all conventions whenever it comes to categorization. Um, it does also include photographs within it, so yes, it's a real mix of everything in here. When I was reading it, it almost felt like I was being presented with these little Polaroid photographs, almost. Um, so it was like these little snapshot stories. It presents you with terrific imagery tied up in a lot of meaning and it uses the colour white in order to tie this imagery and meaning together. I love the whole concept of using the colour white in order to invoke emotion, visualisation and meaning. In the light filtering out of a huge white pondering face, the darkness soaking out of two black eyes. The warm white candle wax creeps ever downwards, feeding themselves to the white wick flames. These stubs sink steadily lower, eventually out of existence. When darkness is imbued with even the faintest light, even things which would not otherwise be white glow with hazy pallor. This is definitely a book in which I feel like I could just quote it from start to finish because every aspect of this is beautiful, every aspect of this is quotable, every aspect of this just it has so much to it um, and that's why I really loved it. The writing in this is unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable because it was just beautiful to read. Um, and like I said, it felt more like a poem to me, so it's poetic from start to finish. Um, the inclusion of images in this also really invoked a lot of feeling for me as well. It's about this individual who's reflecting on the child that her mother had um, before her, and this child passed away. So she never she never got to meet this this person that would have been her older sister, and she's kind of reflecting on how that's created this gap within her family. Um, I find the perspective massively interesting because it's not something I've ever encountered in a book before. You know, grief is depicted a lot in literature, but not from this perspective. This is an individual who never met this person that died, um, but she's she's noticing the effects. She's wondering, would I have existed had this person survived? When that pure cotton fabric grazes her bare flesh, just there, it seems to tell her something. You are a noble person. Your sleep is clean and the fact of your living is nothing to be ashamed of. I feel weird for sharing this but years ago my mum told me that she miscarried her first child and I remember she just casually mentioned it and I was kind of taken aback and I find it kind of upsetting to think about and it's something that I have thought a lot about since and I've always felt like ridiculous for it. I always wondered would I have existed had that other individual existed and I've always wondered what it would have been like to have had another sibling um, and so therefore there was a lot in here that kind of resonated with me. So yeah I, I find I find the perspective interesting because not only could I kind of relate to it I just think that it's very unique because it's not something that I've ever encountered before because like I said grief is depicted a lot but not from this this point of view. Do I think it's going to win? Not necessarily no but I did absolutely love it I love The Vegetarian, I've got The Human Axe, I need to hurry up and read it. You know, it's very different to The Vegetarian, it's it's not, you know, remotely similar, but um, in terms of the poetic writing, that exists across both of them. Um, so yes, I did very much enjoy this, and I feel like, like I said, I could quote this from start to finish, so, so picking out anything to kind of include in this video was really difficult, because, I mean, you can see here, so I normally just underline bits that I like, but here I was just, I kind of gave up on trying to choose which bits to underline. I was like, do you know what? I just liked it all. I liked it all. I love how each page has also got a title. So, you know, we've got here sand, um, which is why it feels like poetry to me, because it just feels like each page is a poem. Um, so this is titled Sand. And she frequently forgot that her body, all our bodies, is a house of sand, that it had shattered and is shattering still slipping stubbornly through fingers. So I find this to be very contemplative, very thoughtful, very philosophical, very heartfelt, beautiful, just basically every adjective under the sun really applies to this book. 
Um, I found it an absolute joy to read and um, yeah, I'm really just enjoying making my way through the Man Booker International Prize. Um, I love Die My Love, which I've done a review on, and I love this one, and I'm also in the middle of reading Flights, which I am enjoying as well. So you'll probably get a review on that one as well. I guess this is the most well-known one on the list. Um, maybe that's why I don't think that it's necessarily going to win, um, but I do really think that it definitely deserves to be on the list, certainly. Um, like I said, I just love the mix of poetry, storytelling, photography, um, just fucking great. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you again in my next video. Bye.